Hi, I'm Knorr, and this is my beginner's guide to Blood Bowl 2. Now, before we start, I want to make one thing clear. This is a video for those of you that just got the game, haven't played much, and want some easy to follow pointers that will improve your game. In this first video, I'm not going to explain too much of the like behind the scenes stuff, but I'm just going to give you some rules that you can follow that should help you play a lot better. Assuming you're not super good. If you're, if you're already great, then why are you even listening to this? If you watch me play my games on YouTube or on Twitch, I break these rules all the time. And it's totally fine to break these rules as long as you realize why you're doing it and what's at stake. The thing that's going to make you a better Blood Bowl coach is realizing when something is too risky to try and when something's actually worth the risk. Blood Bowl at its core is a game about minimizing risk. And in that regard, you want to roll as few dice as possible. So, number one, do all your safe moves first. This means move the players that are not in tackle zones, stand up players that are, that you don't want to move, then do the stuff where you might have to roll a die. If that means picking up the ball, blocking uh, an opponent's piece, or dodging away. All of that, do that after you've done the safe stuff. And how do you know if something needs a die roll? Well, luckily, in Blood Bowl 2, it will show you. If you plot a path for your player, and at some point you need to roll a die, a pop-up will pop up and show you what the percentage chance are of succeeding with that action. Rule number two, going for it, or in short, GFIs. Every piece in Blood Bowl 2 has the ability to do two going for it at the end of their normal movement. These moves require a two plus roll, or as Blood Bowl 2 puts it, an 83% chance of success. Because you're new, don't do these, because they're risky. They're not very risky, they're slightly risky, and we are trying our best here to play as risk-free as possible. So don't do GFIs. Rule number three. There is a play in Blood Bowl that is commonly referred to as surfing, which means that you push an opposing piece off the side of the field. This is bad for the piece that gets pushed off, because you get hurt and you're out until the next drive. So, to make sure that you don't suffer this horrible, horrible fate called surfing, make sure that you never position any one of your players on the edges of the field. So, not here, and definitely not here, unless you're scoring a touchdown. Number four, setting up on defense. This is something I see a lot of coaches do. But please don't, never put more than three players on the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage is the front line of your defensive formation. So just up along the edge. Then everyone else at least two steps backward. This is my preferred general defensive line. As you can see, I have three pieces in the front together, and then I have the other eight pieces two steps back. The reason for this is first of all to minimize my opponent's blocks. Remember, if your piece is standing next to an opponent's piece at the start of your turn, then you can do a block. By having the minimum that you need to have, three pieces on the line of scrimmage, you're minimizing the amount of blocks your opponent can make. Even if you have strong pieces, like you're playing orcs and you have black orcs, which are really strong and buff, having more on the LOS just means that they're gonna get knocked down anyways. So why waste the extra players? Just put them two steps back and you should be fine-ish. At least don't put more than three pieces on the LOS, please. Rule number five. Speaking of being defensive, when it's your turn to kick, always kick in this particular square. Only this square. The only time you're allowed to change is if one of your pieces has the skill kick, because then the ball is only going to scatter half the distance. If you place the uh, kick somewhere else other than this, it's a, a lot more likely that the ball might get kicked off the field, in which case your opponent gets to give the ball to whatever piece he wants. That's bad, so kick right here and never anywhere else, unless you have kick, which you probably don't. 
Number six. If you want to win, you need to score touchdowns. Now, if you watch me play on YouTube or Twitch, you're going to see me stall, as it's called, meaning I have the option to run down and score a touchdown, but I'm waiting. Don't do that if you're starting out. Score when you can. It's fun to score, and it helps you win. So do it as soon as possible, without taking unnecessary risks, of course. Number seven. Be aware of what skills gives your players an automatic reroll. There are a few skills in the game that rather than use a reroll when you fail an action, automatically rerolls the action. These skills can include uh, stuff like dodge, which lets you reroll a dodge, sure hands, which lets you reroll a pickup attempt of the ball, catch, which of course lets you reroll catch, pass, lets you reroll pass, and so on. There are a few of these. Try and keep track of them because it's going to help you keep your mind in the game, and more importantly, it's going to help you better spend the few general rerolls that you have. You can easily tell if a skill is that type of reroll skill by looking at the icon. See, it has this kind of golden border. Yeah, those are reroll skills. Keep track of them. The last and most important rule, rule number eight, always assume the worst. Remember at the start of this, I said, you're free to break all of these rules at any time as long as you know the cost for breaking such a rule. This is what I mean. If you're going to play an action that requires you to roll a die, before you do it, assume the worst and think through, what's going to happen if I fail this? Am I going to drop the ball? Can my opponent score? Or is it less dangerous? Maybe it's just going to be, yeah, my player is going to be knocked down, but it's not the end of the world. This is not the player who's holding on to the ball. Before you do anything else, assume the worst and then hope that that doesn't happen. But keep in mind the worst thing that can happen because if you do that, then maybe you can fix that before you do the action. Maybe it's better to move this free piece into a tackle zone of another player so that he can't capitalize on your failure if you were to fail. So assume the worst at all times. Never be positive. Always be negative. Before we go, there are two more things I want to talk about. The first is how to build your new Blood Bowl 2 team. The game itself gives you the option of using a team assistant to build the team for you. I would personally recommend against that for two reasons. First of all, I don't really think the builds are that good. They kind of focus too much on getting bashy pieces and possibly not enough rerolls or uh, they seem a bit finicky. They're fine. But the main reason you shouldn't use the team assistant is that you don't get to name your players if you use the team assistant. And that might seem like it's not that big a deal. But for me personally, having named the players gives you a closer connection to them. It's easier to remember what piece is what and what piece needs what kind of thing. And it's just more fun if you get to name your own players. So... I would instead recommend that you do not use the team assistant, but you look up some guides on the internet to see some suggested team builds. Unfortunately for you and Blood Bowl 2, Blood Bowl 2 doesn't use the normal rules for teams. The, the costs are slightly different on some of the teams, so I can't just recommend like the normal site I would recommend for team builds, which in this case would be Fumble. Cool place, check it out. Instead, I've made a guide with some different build suggestions from the Steam community that I'm part of. Uh, I've linked them below, so check them out. Um, hopefully, it should give you more than enough information to figure out what type of team you want to build. If you are an absolute beginner, I would suggest you start playing either humans or orcs. The main reason for this is that they are decisively average. The orcs are slightly bashier, the humans are slightly faster and do more of a passing game, but they're very average. And this is good because it lets you learn what skills do and what actions are dangerous. So they are good enough at everything and it lets you not only practice passing, blocking and all of that stuff, but it also helps you figure out the weaknesses of other teams and how to best counteract them. That's it for now. Next episode, we'll probably talk about blocking, tackle zones, assist, and all the things you need to know to uh, murder your opponent.
Until then, don't forget to check out my Steam community, uh, and I'll see you in Blood Bowl 2. Can't believe I forgot to mention this, but if you like this guide, please like it, because it does YouTube stuff to YouTube things, and more people get to see it. So, uh, please do that. If, if you like my content, why not subscribe? A lot of people are. You should too. Uh, bye for now.